My mother grew up around 78th in exchange. Her father owned two or three trucks and hauled wire for the wire mill. He was an Irish immigrant who grabbed onto half of the American dream. He owned a business, but never a house. My father's people had a saloon at 50th and Western. The building's still there. My father grew up in that saloon. He was more at home in a bar than anywhere else. In the late 1930s, he went to work as a traffic engineer for the Chicago Park District. His alderman got him the job. My dad had studied engineering, but it was the Depression, and he wound up working as a helper on a beer truck. Eventually, his alderman took care of him, got him out at the Park District. He stayed there for most of his working life. The thing about my father was that he knew every street in Chicago, even north side diagonals like Milwaukee, Elston, Lincoln, even real obscure diagonals like the very remote Northwest Highway. He knew them all. Whenever we were out somewhere, somebody'd stop him. Hey, John, the guy'd say, I got a delivery at Diversity in Western. How far north's that? My father'd smile. 2,800, he'd say. My mom was always so proud of him, you know, for knowing so much about Chicago. Your father's a genius, she'd say. He knows all those north side streets. My parents didn't go to theater or art shows or concerts or even movies. They were south siders. They went to wakes. It didn't matter if they knew the deceased or not, if they knew the corpse's second cousin. That was close enough. Hell, if they knew a friend of the corpse's second cousin, that was just as good. I remember my father coming home from work one night. He rushes into the kitchen. We gotta get over to Stronsky's, he says. Jimmy Marzullo's mother-in-law is laid out there. My mom gets real indignant. I saw nothing about it in either morning paper, she says. It's in the Herald American, my father says, and he throws down the folded newspaper like a winning poker hand. Stronsky's was Otto V. Stronsky and Son Funeral Chapel at 51st and Western. It was my father's favorite place for wakes. He had gone to school with the son in Stronsky and Son, and he never missed a chance to attend a wake or a funeral there. The two parlors at Stronsky's were big and spacious. Lots of plush upholstered furniture for the grieving, and Stronsky's had a smoker, a basement room for smoking and storytelling. But it wasn't the plush upholstery or the basement smoker that called to my father. It was the bar next door, the Blue Condors Club. At Stronsky's, men sat in the smoker talking about baseball, democratic politics, or speculating when the first black family would move west of Halstead. They then adjourned to the Condors to continue their discussions. My mother often sent me there to get my father. The grieving at Stronsky's finished by 10, but the Condors closed after midnight. Mom wants to go, I'd say to my father as he sat at the Condors bar. I'll be right there, he'd say, but he never came right away. My mother and I waited in the car, a 54 Olds 88 parked in Stronsky's lot. My mother sat behind the wheel because she knew my father'd be too drunk to drive. Pretty soon, he'd stumble over and settle into the passenger seat, never offer an apology. My mom would give him the silent treatment. And she wouldn't say anything to me either, but only because she was so mad at him. I hated all that silence. I'd do my little kid best to start a conversation, but I'd get no takers. So I'd quietly sit between them in the front seat. As we headed south on Western Avenue, I'd pass the time watching the lights of used car lots dance across our windshield. I remember one morning when my father was poring over the Tribune, and he finds a death notice for a guy who was a friend of a distant cousin. His wake was on the north side. How far north, my mother asks. Foster Avenue, my father says, with the paper still stretched out in front of him. 
Foster, Foster, where's that, she says, nearly getting hysterical. 5200 North, my father says. My mother then sits down on a kitchen chair and draws a long, slow breath. She'd only been north of the loop one time. That was the day she and her sister ditched high school to watch Hack Wilson play with the Cubs. Can we get up to Foster and back the same night, she asks. We'll leave the minute I get home from work, my father says, and make sure the kid wears a suit. We left at 5.30. This was before Chicago had expressways and before cars had air conditioning. We sweated our way up western from 6,300 south all the way to 5,200 north. Got to the funeral home at 7.30. The place was nothing compared to Stronsky's. One parlor and a pathetic little smoker. My father pays his respects and shakes a few hands and heads for the bar across the street. He says he knows somebody there. My father was one of those people who knew somebody everywhere. My mother and I sat in a funeral parlor, talking to complete strangers for a couple of hours. Finally, we go out to the car, and we find my father asleep on the back seat. My mother looks real sad. Let's go, she whispers. We drive off, and she does her best to retrace my father's route. Impossible. The woman had no sense of direction, and there were all those north side streets that sounded so strange to our south side ears. Catalpa, Balmoral, Bryn Mawr, Pratt, Roscoe, Wellington, Wolfram, Barry. Christ, we were lost for hours. We drove in circles. We stopped at gas stations for directions, but we couldn't find our way. And through all this, my father slept. Sometime past midnight, my mother stops the car. John, she says and shakes him, we're lost. What street you on, he asks and doesn't even bother to sit up. Milwaukee, we just passed Division, she says. He opens one eye. Address is getting bigger or smaller. Smaller, she says. Keep going. Cross Chicago Avenue, make a right on Ogden, then a left on Western. He then goes back to sleep. We found our way. And once we were home, my father gets out of the car and manages to get into bed without any help from my mother and me. The next morning, my mother brags about her husband to anybody who'll listen. My John knows all those north side streets better than any north sider. When I was 13, my father made a final visit to Stronsky's. He died suddenly and was waked there for three days. Everybody came even the mayor, the old man himself, Richard J. Daly. But it didn't matter who came. My father wouldn't be flying with the Condors anymore. On the day of the funeral, as the mourners filed past the casket, more than one puts his hand on my shoulder. Your father was a genius, they say. He knew all those north side streets. <laughs>